ordinances. And she specifically asked that I thank the members of the Wilmington Police and Fire Department for the heroic efforts um, in their t family's time of need. And uh, so I would ask that everybody here join me in a moment of silence uh, as we send our thoughts and prayers to Judy and her family. Thank you. And so I'll do the very best I can. And uh, I know Judy may or may not be watching, and I want to let her know that we're thinking of her. And uh, we're praying for her and her family tonight. Uh, with that, I would like to move on to item number two, which is the transmitting of Treasury warrants. We have several. Treasury warrant 202328. Treasury warrant 202328. WIRES, Treasury Warrant 28A, Treasury Warrant 202329, Treasury Warrant 202329, WIRES 29A, Treasury Warrant 202330, 202330, WIRES, Treasury Warrant 30A. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion's been made and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes of January 9th, 2023. Is there Mr. any discussion? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion Cara. to table uh, those minutes until uh, uh, Chairman O'Connell is, uh, is available to vote on them as well. We have a motion to table the minutes. Is there a second? Motion's been seconded. No discussion under a motion to table. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Those will be tabled. Thank you. And. Our first appointment tonight is with Town Manager Jeff Hall for his presentation of the annual budget, this year's FY24 budget. Before he begins, I want to thank him and his administrative team for all their work leading up to tonight. I want to thank uh, all the department heads and all the employees who have contributed uh, to this presentation tonight. I want to acknowledge uh, that we have some of our esteemed colleagues from the school committee here, as well as the school department and number of department heads with us in addition to members of the public. So thank you all for being here and for your efforts. Um, at this time, I will turn it over to our town manager, Mr. Hall. Jeff? Uh, good evening. Uh, in accordance with Chapter 592 of the Acts of 1950, it is my duty and responsibility to provide the Select Board and Finance Committee <clears throat> with the projected expenditures and revenues for the fiscal year 2024, which begins July 1, 2023. <clears throat> the documents I am speaking to are both the operating budget and the capital improvement plan for the period fiscal 24 through fiscal 28. <clears throat> uh, the COVID pandemic and its variants have been a central focus for the past three years. We have met the challenge, although uh, it hasn't been easy. While the COVID and its consequences are still with us, new challenges are at the center of our attention. Higher interest rates than have been seen in generations, inflationary pressures, an unstable global economy, ongoing supply chain issues, and concern over whether we're heading into a deep recession or as the Federal Reserve is hoping a soft landing. If only we had a crystal ball and could peer into the future, six to 18 months, to see how things played out, but unfortunately we do not. The board, as is customary, has expressed a desire to see a minimal budget increase. Once again, a serious effort has been made to minimize increases. The total proposed budget for fiscal 24 is 129,931,000 $393, which is an increase of 4456813 or 3.55% from the current budget. Uh, the breakdown, which will be seen in the next slide, uh, shows the various categories uh, of our overall budget. The first category is the school department, uh, 47658000 045 is the proposed budget there, which is an increase of 3.75%. And I'll 
talk about some of the details um, shortly. Shared cost of the four categories uh, went up the, the least, uh, and shared costs are really those that, as it states, are borne by both uh, the general government as well as the school department. Uh, it includes things like property and general liability insurance, health insurance, uh, the debt costs, statutory charges, uh, and Medicare employer contributions are some of the examples. Uh, general government, which is the next category, uh, 35,201,175 uh, is it reflects an increase of 4.6 percent. I think it's noteworthy here to note that the uh, almost a million dollars worth of the cost here has been associated with heating prices. Uh, certainly everybody who has oil heat knows the costs have gone up dramatically and we're seeing a significant uh, increase there, uh, as well as uh, addressing uh, ALS services, advanced life support. Between those two, uh, it's over $900,000 in those two categories alone, and I will speak to that uh, in more particulars later on. Uh, I would also note, uh, as you look at the town salaries, you will see in some instances uh, salaries where it appears that the uh, increase is higher than you would normally uh, anticipate. Uh, I just want to clarify that when we presented the budget last year, uh, there were several collective bargaining groups that we did not have uh, agreements with. We did not have uh, a COLA in place for the non-represented. So this year's numbers that you will see in the uh, personnel category represent two years worth of COLAs in addition to, in some cases, uh, step increases uh, or longevity uh, uh, increases. The Shawshin Tech, which is the third, uh, fourth category in the overall uh, budget scheme here, is expected to go up 15 percent, 7,267,806. Uh, this is a very difficult number to project as their budget process is really uh, behind ours. It doesn't start uh, on the same time scale. I've had conversations with uh, Tony McIntosh, the superintendent over there, uh, and because of uh, the, the timing, uh, it, there's not a lot of information uh, he was able to offer. Um, last year, you recall, the increase of, was a 20 percent increase. Uh, we believe that it may be slightly less based upon the enrollments. <clears throat> Some of the major factors uh, that are playing into uh, this year's uh, budget increase are uh, both the increases in the Shawshin Tech assessment, uh, as noted, the heating oil uh, costs, uh, costs attributed to advanced life support, uh, the program that we're going to look to adjust in health insurance, as well as certainly uh, dealing with the Wildwood uh, Intermediate uh, plan to accommodate uh, those folks. Uh, with respect to revenues, we are once again uh, budgeting uh, our revenues or estimating our revenues in a very conservative way. Uh, I would just note that uh, the development of revenue estimates is not a precise uh, science, so to speak. We're looking at uh, a time frame six to 18 months into the future. Uh, there's a lot of uh, circumstances that are beyond our control, the state of the economy, the ability of the state to uh, keep local aid at its existing levels or perhaps increase it slightly. The levels of uh, construction here locally, whether it's construction of new homes uh, or uh, construction of uh, businesses, which, as you know, contributes to uh, real estate uh, uh, values and new growth. Car sales, which are part of the motor vehicle excise tax revenue that comes in. And also, uh, quite frankly, the degree to which people eat out locally, because that also contributes to the meals tax. Uh, so all of those things have to be factored in. Uh, underestimating revenues uh, means that excess revenues uh, go to the general fund and ultimately into free cash. And as a, a practical matter, uh, for many years now, it's been my practice uh, to be very conservative in terms of our revenues. Uh, overestimating revenues requires budget cuts, and certainly that can be very problematic because typically 
uh, when we become aware of uh, that, that revenues are falling behind projection, we're anywhere from six to nine months into the fiscal year, which becomes very problematic to try to dial back expenses for individual departments. I would note that many years ago, back in the late 80s, uh, we did have a situation where revenues uh, were projected in excess of actuals, and that contributed to a period in which we had negative free cash, and really it took uh, a few years and some fairly significant uh, budget adjustments to get back into a positive place. So if I had to err on one side or the other, I'd certainly rather uh, underestimate revenues than overestimate revenues. Uh, the largest source of revenue, uh, as you can see by this diagram, uh, is clearly the real estate uh, tax, and it's inching its way towards 80%. <clears throat> uh, it's noteworthy, uh, for the first time since Proposition 2 and a half was adopted in 1980, the town did not increase its taxes to the levy limit. Uh, one of the fundamental elements of Proposition 2.5 is that cities and towns have the ability to increase their levy by 2.5% of the previous year's uh, levy. In this uh, case, uh, knowing that the value of property in Wilmington had really uh, gone up substantially, uh, the decision was made to uh, not increase the tax to the levy limit in an effort to blunt some of the consequences on property taxes uh, paid by both residents and businesses. So we are actually $1.2 million below the levy uh, at this point based upon that decision. Another element of uh, the property tax is new growth, which is the uh, value associated with new construction, whether it's homes uh, or new uh, commercial buildings uh, that are uh, put up. Uh, again, we consistently estimate new growth to be uh, on the conservative side, and again, this year we're estimating that to be $1.1 million. I would note that this past, uh, this current fiscal year, uh, new growth uh, came in at $2,426,892, which is certainly a, a much higher number. Uh, the vast majority of that new growth, however, was attributed to personal property. So when a business uh, purchases or changes out equipment, uh, capital equipment in their, in their operation, uh, that is taxed and that revenue becomes a personal property. That's clearly something that is very difficult to predict uh, as to when companies are going to change out their equipment, and so we try to be very conservative uh, in our estimates there. Ultimately, the uh, total, fra total value of the uh, real estate uh, taxes is $102,947,392. Uh, the next largest category of revenue, which is a distant second, uh, is local aid, and that makes up about 11.5% of the budget, and we're estimating that at $15,049,313. Uh, again, we're anticipating level funding. Uh, the state, you know, has been, uh, in, in my estimation, very helpful to the cities and towns in spite of their uh, challenges in dealing with COVID and all the associated costs. Uh, they have maintained local aid. In fact, this past year, it saw a slight increase of about 390,000. Uh, local receipts, which is the third category of revenue, uh, consists of fees from building permits, uh, from health permits, uh, licenses that the Board of Selectmen may issue, town clerk, uh, and this makes up about 5%, 5.5% uh, of the overall revenue stream, uh, 7155448 And then the final category, other available funds, uh, includes the use of free cash, capital stabilization, and uh, indirect charges. So for example, the Water Division, uh, which is a special uh, revenue fund, uh, the revenue that's generated from the uh, water billing, uh, we charge a portion of their costs, whether it's insurance, their uh, property insurance, auto that's attributed to um, the, the water department and the employees in that department. Uh, those costs, those expenses get charged to the water department and that constitutes revenue for us. Uh, with respect to priorities, <clears throat> education, 
continues to be uh, clearly a top priority. I think it's fair to say every community uh, wants the next generation to have access to resources uh, that will provide them with the greatest opportunity for success. Those resources, however, are not unlimited. As parents, we recognize there are limits to our ability to pay for sports programs, music, art, and acting programs, and education beyond high school. The town is no different. Funds are made available to the fullest extent possible, recognizing that we still need to plow snow, to respond to medical emergencies, to address crime, and to respond to human service needs throughout the community. After two years uh, at two, of 2.5% uh, budget increases, uh, the recommended increase for the school department's operating budget is 3.75%. Some of the issues that the school department uh, will be dealing with is addressing the costs associated with teacher contracts, the prospect of a contract with their teacher's aides. Uh, in fact, $1.24 million worth of their increases uh, are attributed to uh, salary adjustments, which is the vast majority of their uh, proposed budget increase. Additionally, uh, the State Operational Services Division, which is an uh, <coughs> agency within the Executive Office of Administration and Finance, uh, advised superintendents this fall uh, that their uh, out-of-district uh, rates for out-of-district special education programs would be going up as much as 14%. Uh, this is quite honestly unheard of as for the last 12 years or so, it's my understanding that those rates have averaged about a 2% increase. So this is clearly uh, going to be a challenge for the school department. Also, they're in the process of uh, bidding uh, for transportation services. Uh, their existing contract, as I understand it, expires at the end of this uh, fiscal year. And the expectation is there that transportation costs could increase as much as $110,000. Uh, in addition, they're seeking to create opportunities for more students to remain in district, which certainly has a number of benefits, including the fact that these students can remain in Wilmington, be in familiar surroundings, uh, perhaps with friends, but also uh, it may reduce the out-of-district costs um, substantially. Uh, other issues that are certainly in play here, as we all know, back in March of 2022, $1.2 million was approved for the next stage of our work with the uh, MSBA, Mass School, uh, Mass School uh, Board of um, uh, Building Authority, and that money is to be used for the hiring of an owner's project manager and design services for uh, going through this feasibility study. Uh, SMMA has been hired to assist the town uh, with that process, and we are in the midst of going through the selection of a designer uh, who will also uh, work with us to look at the various options for a new school or an alteration to an existing school. <clears throat> uh, equally important is accommodating the students and staff displaced from the Wildwood School <clears throat> and who are expected to be displaced over the next five to six years before a new school becomes available. Utilizing the middle school to host some students and staff from the Wildwood is a good idea. I applaud Superintendent Brand for identifying this option. The option is <clears throat> clearly the best of, from those that are, were considered over the last several months. The concern that I had expressed uh, and uh, certainly uh, uh, voiced more recently uh, is a concern over the cost and also the physical impact on a building that is still only 23 years old and presumably that will be in operation for at least another 25 or 30 years. Many of the changes that would be proposed uh, in the middle school will have to ultimately be undone once the pre-K and K students uh, move on. Uh, after further discussions with the school department, we have agreed uh, that efforts will be made to reduce to some measure the scope of construction are required in the school while still providing the appropriate uh, facilities for pre-K and K students and staff. The cost estimate uh, for this work at the Wildwood, uh, as part of this Wildwood uh, Intermediate Plan 
uh, is budgeted for $1.1 million, which you'll recall was the amount that was uh, recommended by the Wildwood School Building Committee and also recommended by the school committee. Uh, as the discussions uh, took place last week, we have not had an opportunity to uh, get uh, revised uh, figures and in fact the um, uh, Doran Whittier, the firm that we've been working with, is looking at that information uh, now and we expect uh, revisions uh, soon. I would also note that of that $1.1 million that is proposed, $100,000 uh, is slated for a, a, a play structure to be located outside of the uh, middle school. Uh, thanks to uh, the efforts of Jamie Magaldi, our public works director, uh, he was able to identify an alternative. Uh, this play structure is actually uh, a less permanent structure and can be uh, used in other locations uh, once this um, it's no longer needed at the, uh, at the middle school. And my proposal, which would be uh, considered later tonight, uh, is that the Board of Selectmen authorize the transfer of $100,000 from the American Rescue Plan Act, or ARPA, funds uh, to actually pay for this play structure. Uh, as previously noted, uh, Wilmington saw a significant uptick uh, in the students uh, attending the Shashin Tech in October of 21, uh, the figures uh, represented a uh, actually 36 additional students. If you just go back a slide, uh, 36 additional students uh, were going to the tech this October, uh, October 1 of 22. That number is up six students. So uh, that gives me reason to believe that our increase will not be quite as steep although clearly there are other factors that uh, impact our assessment, including their own costs, whether they have uh, uh, certainly contracts with uh, personnel there, uh, building maintenance issues, capital projects, the amount of state aid uh, that is received uh, by the tech. So all those things are clearly unknown at this point, uh, and we're, we're, we're using the 15% as our, our best estimate at this point. Uh, next, in terms of uh, priorities, uh, is public safety. Certainly, it's a fundamental responsibility of the town to provide a safe place for residents and people who come here to work and visit. Over the past three fiscal years, four police officers have been added to the ranks to address uh, the uptick in uh, responses required. We continue to experience challenges of officers retiring and pursuing or pursuing other careers. Filling vacancies uh, certainly takes time between just the normal recruitment process, but also uh, working through the civil service protocols and also the nine months uh, that are certainly required and necessary uh, for individuals to go through the police academy. Uh, uh, on a positive note, I will say that we have three new officers who recently graduated from the Linfield Police Academy and two additional officers who are starting their academy training this week. Clearly the goal is to continue to pursue uh, a fully staffed department there. Uh, Central Dispatch is often an unheralded but key part of the public safety team. A critical, it's critical to have individuals who are able to take calls and are unfla infla unflappable under pressure and can focus on getting accurate information from the callers and conveying that out in a clear and succinct way uh, to police and fire. This seems like a fairly straightforward uh, job and in some cases I think is underrated. We have had a number of people step into this role and ultimately determine it's not for them and that has created a fair amount of turnover. Uh, in addition, we uh, realized in doing some uh, salary review of, our, uh, of their colleagues in comparable communities that we needed to make adjustments uh, to our dispatch ranks in terms of salary so that they're more in the middle of the pack, so to speak, uh, and that has been done. Uh, having reliable and state-of-the-art communications equipment is critical to assist with timely and accurate information being conveyed. This year, the town is completing its third year of a $1.3 million project to replace outdated antennas and radios and add microwave uh, to bolster the communication capabilities. 
<coughs> the number of calls to the fire department continues to increase, and many of those calls are medical emergencies. Uh, Chief Bill Cavanaugh obtained a federal grant in 2020 to help fund eight new positions that were approved at town meeting. That grant is expiring this March, and the town will now be responsible for assuming 100% of those costs. Wilmington firefighters are all required to be emergency medical technicians, EMTs, uh, and provide basic life support. For many years, the town has contracted for advanced life support services, uh, which are a higher level of service uh, and require a higher degree of medical training by paramedics. Private ALS providers are finding it harder and harder to meet the demands of these ALS services. The demand uh, placed on medical providers across the spectrum, as we all know, has been incredibly challenging over COVID, and the consequence of that is certainly many people leaving the medical field uh, in paramedics is no exception. The need exists to address the long-term ability to provide reliable and sustained advanced life support services. Last year, uh, the chief, fire chief, uh, put out a bid for ALS services and two vendors responded. Uh, both vendors uh, provided prices that were substantially higher than the 551,000 uh, that we currently are paying for these contracted services. Ultimately, we opted to exercise a one-year option to extend with the current provider, and uh, fortunately that we did that because shortly thereafter, the second bidder went out of business. <clears throat> uh, as it stands, uh, this budget includes approximately $745,000 to fund uh, a series of options for providing ALS service uh, in-house. Uh, some of those options would include uh, either hiring uh, additional uh, personnel, eight trained paramedics that would come in and provide that service as a supplement to the existing fire department, or uh, providing the opportunity for existing firefighters to be trained as paramedics uh, and step into that role. Uh, in addition, we would be looking to create a, a position to oversee uh, the <coughs> ALS process. It is a very specialized program. The Office of Emergency Medical Services uh, is responsible for overseeing and, and approving uh, compliance with all their protocols, making sure that the appropriate training is done, uh, that the medics are getting their certifications, the proper medications are, uh, and equipment are in the ambulances. So those are, uh, th that is budgeted and will be in the works. <clears throat> also, because the expectation is that this rollout will take some time, potentially as much as six months, uh, we are budgeting to continue with the existing uh, ALS uh, program. Uh, again, not wanting to be without advanced life support Certainly, once we're able to put this program into effect, the expectation would be that the uh, contract with the current provider uh, would, uh, would be terminated. A concerted effort is underway to identify one or more suitable locations for fire substation in North Wilmington. The fire chief and other staff have reviewed a number of sites suggested for consideration and the fire chief has spoken with individuals about potential sites. A few leads came about from a notice that the town posted recently uh, seeking uh, to identify sites. At this point, I'm not recommending uh, money in this budget for design services until we have one or more sites to consider. Uh, taking the approach similar to the one we took when uh, the senior center and the town school admin uh, buildings uh, were proposed, uh, at that time, as you know, we had sites to, to look at before we brought in a designer and the same approach would be proposed here. Uh, next under uh, the various categories is uh, capital improvements. The ability to conduct day-to-day -day operations rely upon the safe and reliable buildings, uh, vehicles, infrastructure, and technology. Uh, capital requests total over $6 million for the coming fiscal year. 
and the capital that is proposed will be addressed using a combination of the tax levy, free cash, capital stabilization, Chapter 90 funds, which are funds from the state specifically for road repairs and ARPA funds. Some of the uh, ca uh, items uh, under the capital improvement include $300,000 to replace a 2006 dump truck in the highway department. This is proposed from free cash. 142000 to replace a 2014 wing mower to keep the 40 plus acres of athletic fields in parks trimmed. $65,000 to replace a 2010 three quarter ton dump truck in the cemetery division. $120,000, next slide please. $120,000 to replace a 2000, I'm sorry, uh, to replace a play structure at the Boutwell Early Childhood Center, as you can see, uh, there are, uh, it, it's in need of replacement. Uh, $80,000 to uh, continue the phased uh, expansion of the cemetery. Uh, some of the expansion will be uh, going on in the area that was recently acquired on uh, Wildwood Street, some uh, grading and uh, uh, gra uh, site preparation. In addition, the funds will be used for uh, work to the existing network of roads uh, within the cemetery. $40,000 uh, is a proposed for engineering services and, and to develop specifications to replace the artificial turf field at the high school. The turf field was put in in 2013 and will be proposed for replacement in 2026. $40,000 is proposed to resurface the tennis courts at the Boutwell School. Certainly the picture speaks a thousand words there. And then $104,000 uh, in total in town uh, technology upgrades in one instance. The $54,000 uh, is the third year of our uh, upgrade to our voice over IP uh, phone system. Uh, this specifically to the public safety building. Uh, and then $50,000 uh, is proposed for uh, re uh, technology in the uh, police cruisers, computers specifically. Uh, $250,000 is proposed for replacement of four frontline police cruisers. Uh, this is proposed from free cash. $67,000 is proposed for replacement of a fire prevention vehicle. 180000 to purchase three cardiac monitors, which are required as part of an ALS ambulance fit up. And then 675000 to replace the roof at the West Intermediate School. This is proposed from capital stabilization. $170,000 to complete design services, uh, do cost estimates for window replacements at the West Intermediate School. And then $15,000 for a similar effort at the Harnden Tavern. There's uh, something in the order of 33 windows that require replacement. The idea here is to have uh, the, the specifications develop cost estimates with the expe expectation that the following year uh, funds would be sought for the actual cost of replacing the windows. Uh, and then $1.1 million uh, for the uh, repurposing of certain areas within the middle school. Uh, and this would be proposed for funding from free cash. And certainly, as you can see, uh, these are some of the points uh, as to why uh, this would be an important uh, project to pursue. $76,000 uh, is proposed to replace a school minivan, uh, which is high mileage and uh, has need for uh, repairs. $45,000 uh, is proposed to continue the process of replacing the public address system throughout the schools. And then $200,000 is proposed to replace the school department's voice over IP phone system. The full summary uh, is here in, in broad categories. You'll see uh, chapter 90, uh, the vast majority of that, about 70,000 uh, is for road paving <laughs> projects throughout town, uh, tax levy, free cash, uh, all of the, uh, in the water, in the case of the water, the bulk of that one million is uh, proposed for a uh, replacing a water line along Forest Street, and then a uh, the sewer enterprise fund is thirty thousand for a pump station that needs to be replaced. The 
town will be engaging in a significant amount of borrowing in the years to come. I would note uh, that we're not looking to do any borrowing immediately uh, for the two projects that were approved at the special town meeting. Uh, we have uh, between the uh, money approved for uh, from free cash and the capital stabilization fund, uh, we believe that we have enough money for the immediate term uh, to not have to uh, issue a bond anticipation note. However, next year we expect uh, to engage in long-term borrowing for not only those projects, uh, but also a, the Nassau Ave water tank, which you recall was uh, replaced a couple of years ago. Uh, <clears throat> as a consequence, we're going to be having to deal with standard and pours as we do in any time we borrow. Uh, and they have consistently rated Wilmington high with regard to its reserves, but continue to express concerns uh, about our ability uh, to deal with OPEB and pension liability. In the past, questions that they have raised uh, center around whether we can continue to still put money aside for these purposes. Uh, so once again, I'm proposing uh, that we use $1.5 million from the tax levy to prepay on our pension liability. Uh, this will accelerate uh, the payment of uh, that liability, which is due to be fully paid off in 2037. Uh, certainly to the extent that we can accelerate that and pay it off sooner, we can focus more of our attention on OPEB, which is uh, essentially our liability related to health insurance. Uh, with that $1.5 million contribution, uh, it would bring up a total uh, prepayment of $8.5 million over the last eight years. Uh, also proposing $1 million from the tax levy be added to the OPEB trust fund, uh, which would increase that balance to $11.5 million. Uh, again, recognizing, uh, quite frankly, uh, trying to convey to, um, to Standard & Poor's uh, that actions speak louder than words and that we've continued over these past many years now to set money aside towards these, uh, these liabilities. Uh, and then finally, uh, it's clear to me that we need to replenish <coughs> the capital stabilization account. Uh, you'll recall when we went into the special town meeting, we had just over $17 million uh, in the capital stabilization account. Uh, $6 million of that was drawn to uh, support the senior center. I'm proposing that we put $1 million back into that fund to bring it up to $12.3 million approximately. With regard to personnel, uh, there are no new proposed personnel with the possible exception uh, of paramedics if in the end we decide to go that route with hiring trained uh, paramedics. Uh, however, I would like to suggest that we give future consideration uh, to some areas where uh, additional personnel may be required. The town right now has over 300 full-time, part-time, and seasonal employees. For many years, the assistant town manager position has also been responsible for human resources. Given the responsibilities uh, that this uh, human resource function entails, uh, I can certainly envision a standalone position, and in fact, many of our neighboring communities have standalone uh, HR directors in addition to uh, an assistant town manager. Being responsible for recruiting and hiring uh, that whole process, civil service, including assessment centers for uh, police and fire supervisory positions, the EEO reporting and OSHA reporting that has recently come online, all these tasks leave little time uh, to assist me in other areas that are required. With respect to IT, IT, as you know, is ubiquitous to everything we do. It is ingrained in all of our work. The requirements for maintaining the replacement schedule for hardware, resolving software issues, educating staff on more effective use of computers, and developing strategies to reduce the vulnerability of cyber attacks has this department of three, quite frankly, maxed out. Procurement is another area uh, currently, we are really a decentralized uh, procurement system in which most of the departments uh, engage in their own procurement, certainly with assistance from my office. Uh, a few personnel do have uh, the training from the Inspector General's office in terms of procurement and 
Uh, certainly they've shared those, uh, that information with other departments. But I think it would, uh, we should seriously consider the prospect of a purchasing agent or procurement officer as many communities have. And there may even be an opportunity here to share such a position uh, with the school department and perhaps achieve some savings in terms of joint purchase of office equipment or office supplies. Uh, planning and conservation serves as the point of contact uh, for individuals seeking to establish business or create housing in Wilmington. That office proposes zoning bylaws uh, intended to create opportunities for a mix of development. And these functions, I would argue, in fact, are economic development, although they may not generate the same buzz uh, as reaching out to businesses uh, to convince them to locate here. Uh, with all of that work that is ongoing and their support of the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board and all they do, uh, the department uh, has little time uh, for the work of what I would call outfacing uh, presence, whether it's uh, engaging with the Chamber of Commerce or reaching out to businesses. So this is something I think uh, should be considered going forward. In conclusion, uh, at the thresh we are at the threshold of the most significant town building boom since certainly the high school and arguably since the early 1960s when four schools, the Boutwell, North, Woburn, and West were completed between 1961 and 1964. In addition to the two recently approved projects, we will find a location to construct a fire substation and seek funds for design and construction. Additionally, we will be asking residents to approve what will likely be the most expensive municipal building in the town's history, which will be a new school. Maintaining strong reserves will continue to be important to offset the borrowing costs, which will be expected to increase significantly over the next five to 10 years. Those reserves must also be re, uh, re available for the more mundane run of the mill types of things like equipment replacement, building repairs and technology upgrades. This budget has been uh, prepared in a sincere attempt to limit the overall uh, cost increases dealing with much higher fuel costs and higher costs in vehicles and equipment replacement and the need to address life, uh, address the life support, advanced life support services as well as establishing an interim plan to accommodate students and staff at the Wildwood. This budget will certainly be critiqued, uh, which is to be expected. In the words of Rufus Miles Jr., who served in the administration of Presidents Eisenhower, Kennedy, and Johnson, where you stand depends upon where you sit. We each see the world through the lens of our individual experiences and belief system. The greatest challenge we all face is stepping back when confronted with differing and opposing opinions and seriously try to view matters from their viewpoint. Only then can we stand to change, uh, stand a chance rather, to reach consensus, which is what in the end matters to move forward constructively. The Finance Committee will begin its meetings tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. and will continue meeting on Tuesdays and Thursdays throughout the month of February with the exception of uh, the week of February 20th and will continue uh, into early March. Meetings are all posted uh, and will take place right here in Room 9. Before closing, I wish to extend my thanks to the many individuals who have been involved in this process. Preparing this budget is certainly not a solo act. I owe a debt of gratitude to those who picked up the slack while I have been focused on the budget and to those who assisted with its development. To the department heads who all work within the parameters that they have been given uh, and each year submit budgets that are reasonable. To Glenn Brand and Paul Ruggiero who have been professional and patient during our sometimes difficult discussions. I recognize they are up against their own challenges that I cannot fully appreciate. To my staff, Wendy Martinello, who is incredibly organized and prompt with every sh everything she does. She has multiple roles sp split between uh, procurement, assisting with HR, dealing with civil service, 
and a variety of other tasks. She is finishing her final couple of miles on her run of over 17 years with the town and will be retiring in April and she will be truly missed. Kathy Godfrey, who's tucked away in a room without windows uh, and does an awful lot for our retirees in making the transition that they go through from an active employee <coughs> to be being retired and dealing with a host of questions about benefits. Uh, thank her for her efforts. Also to Tom, uh, Tom Dunahue, who's our newest addition uh, to the office. Every day he demonstrates what I call a youthful exuberance and has such a positive uh, effect on everyone in the office, treats everyone, employees and the public, uh, with a great deal of courtesy and, and just a real pleasant demeanor. He's been a utility player in terms of working on a number of projects uh, for the town. And then certainly Beverly Dalton, who's my go-to uh, with respect to any issues requiring institutional knowledge. Uh, she maintains a firm handle on all of the licensing and permitting that the board uh, is required to deal with in addition to making sure that town topics, the town report, the finance committee report, and the town calendar all go out on time. And for the key players who were involved in preparing this budget, Brian Perry uh, has picked up where Mike Morris left off. He is calm and collected and knows municipal finance. Uh, he's been the point person in terms of putting together the CIP uh, in addition to working on the operating budget. And I can't tell you how many times I've asked him to revise one number or another over the last week or so, uh, and he does it in stride. Also to Andrea Dimitriadis, uh, who's the Assistant Finance Director. Uh, she's been very involved in all the edits uh, on the budget, in addition, uh, particularly focused on our personnel book I uh, appreciate her efforts. Uh, she's new to our organization, but has been a real quick study. Uh, to Jamie Magaldi's staff, in particular Diane Forrest, who updates the information on our equipment book. And certainly last but not least, Susan Inman, the Assistant Town Manager and HR Director. Uh, this, uh, in fact, her first year anniversary will be tomorrow. Uh, and certainly she has been a quick study, uh, really jumped into the process here uh, was responsible for looking at all of our insurances and preparing our insurance budget and much of the narrative in the CIP. And quite frankly, I didn't really have an awful lot of time uh, to work with her on that. And so just demonstrating that she can uh, really get up to speed very quickly on these things. So with all that said, uh, thank you for your time and for listening. And with that, I'll turn it back over to the chair. Well, thank you, Mr. Hall. I appreciate that very much, your presentation. And uh, we look forward to um, vetting this and hearing more from you over the coming weeks. Uh, before we open it up for questions and comments from my colleagues, I, too, uh, want to um, send our sincere thanks to the administrative team, yourself, the assistant town manager, director of finance, and as you mentioned, those who work <coughs> diligently behind the scenes specifically uh, Wendy, Bev, and others, and I want to congratulate uh, Wendy um, on all the work she's done and her upcoming retirement. And, and as you mentioned, it's those who work in the office behind the scenes that do quite a bit of work. And uh, I also want to compliment Wendy on her recent extraordinary baking skills that uh, my kids <laughs> benefited, benefited from the last trip into the office. So um, thank you all for your work. And Jeff, thank you for your thorough presentation and for all your work leading up to tonight and beyond. This will be available on our town website in, in short order, and this will be available in the manager's office for those interested. As I mentioned at the onset, I want to thank our colleagues on the school committee for their partnership, uh, the dis various department heads who are here, uh, members of the finance committee that are here, and thank you in advance for what you'll do over the next coming weeks and months. Um, and with that, I will uh, start by taking questions and comments from my colleagues, and then if anybody in the audience would like to ask a question or comment, we'll open it up uh, to you as well. So uh, is there anybody who would like to make a co uh, comment or ask a question? I have one. Mr. DePalma. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hull, you had mentioned uh, possibly putting on an HR director or 
assistant HR director or someone in that capacity? Uh, well, I'm not suggesting <coughs> that in this budget. I'm suggesting that going forward uh, we give some serious thought to uh, looking at having a, a standalone HR uh, position. Uh, I think, um, as I indicated, uh, many communities have been doing this for some period of time. I think it certainly has merit given the uh, complexity and the volume of work that's required uh, in terms of HR. Uh, just from my perspective, uh, you know, quite frankly, right now um, a, a good portion of the work that Susan is doing is HR related, which uh, makes it very difficult for me to delegate uh, other things because, you know, she's her bandwidth is, is uh, on HR. I, I agree with that uh, wholeheartedly. I also would uh, recommend that when you do start looking at that position, you also look at it as a combination uh, position for uh, someone who can research and write grants also for the town. Make it a combination of the two. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? A question or a comment? Mr. Cairo. Yeah. I just um, want to thank you, uh, Mr. Ho, for the presentation. Uh, and I want to thank your department heads, your town manager staff for the for the work that uh, is done not only throughout the, the year, but I'm sure that there was a long uh, process and many hours uh, to put this budget together. So I want to recognize everyone and thank them for their efforts. Uh, just a couple of takeaways that I noted uh, real quickly in seeing this. Uh, I thank you for providing this to us uh, uh, Friday evening. Usually we get this report tonight, uh, but haven't had a real chance to, to go through it just a little bit. And some of the takeaways that I got from it, um, it's the first time uh, since Prop 2 and a half that we're not uh, taxing to the levy. Yeah. So I guess that's pretty good for us taxpayers, right? We're saving some money there, uh, which is great. Um, so it leaves a little bit money on the table, so to speak. Uh, but how does that work uh, going forward? So next year, when we come up to this situation, can we tax to the levy? Or because we're only taxing to a certain point, and I, I don't know what that is, is it two and a quarter, two percent? What is it? Does the law say we can only go to what we're going to today? We or could can access. We, go back? we could access that additional levy capacity. The consequence, of course, would be. The impact <laughs> on taxes. Right. right, right. So next year, and I don't know if Mr. Perry can answer this. Is there something that now that we have not taxed to the levy? Just for the current year. Okay. The, the levy limit is what the levy limit is, regardless of what we tax up to. Right. For next year, the levy limit will be based on what the um, current year's levy limit is. So you can basically recoup that the next year if you wish to tax to the max. Okay. Than the following year. You just lose it out for this current year. Not that I'm suggesting that we tax our residents and uh, citizens of Wilmington any higher than they need to be taxed, but <laughs> it's good to know that uh, if a situation occurs, that there's the opportunity to recoup that. Uh, you know. um, and then you mentioned, a little confused on this, um, we have the $1.1 million for the uh, Wildwood um, uh, education, the the, the, um, the renovation to the middle school, the 1.1 that you're keeping on the table. Yes. And you mentioned that um, that we're going to that that Jamie Magaldi is doing a hundred thousand uh, dollar play structure, which is great, and saving from I think what they initially said eight hundred thousand or something, which I think was kind of crazy, but. Um, so you'd mentioned that the 1.1 includes the $100,000, and then you mentioned that tonight the board is going to vote on taking $100,000 from the opera fund for the playground. So I, I guess I'm a little confused because I don't want to take money from the opera funds if we don't have to. Uh, so is the $100,000 coming out of that $1.1 million, which initially was much higher than that, or so or are the, we taking it from the opera funds? I, the I, the I, proposal uh, is to uh, include the 1.1 in the budget, again, trying to um, recognize the prospect of, uh, well, essentially going with the 
the, the recommendation, uh, I, I would not expect we would have to use the 1.1, uh, but since we don't have uh, current estimates on the revised scope of work, uh, my rationale was err on the side of being too high, and certainly between now and town meeting, uh, if that number can be revised down, then so be it, as opposed to going the other way. So we don't necessarily have to vote on those transfer of the APA funds now, because that 100,000 could be in the 1.1 well, million. I would suggest uh, one of the advantages of being able to transfer the ARPA funds now uh, is that we can purchase the equipment now. Uh, and I, I know Jamie had expressed to me some concerns about, um, I think it was a combination of lead time and potential uh, costs by, you know, if we delay on that. So one of the rationales here of seeking the transfer of ARPA funds <coughs> is, in, in part, the, the two I, sources that were identified within ARPA, uh, I think we can spare those funds. Uh, but also uh, it, it makes sense to try to put that order in now so that the equipment can be um, ready for the summer when it's needed. Gotcha. But and I'm going to keep going a little bit more. So if the 1.1, you don't need to use it all because we're putting $100,000 from the ARPA funds there, which were designated for other, other things, it, are you going to reimburse those? Is that... 100,000 going to go back to the opera funds, or is that going to free cash, the remainder of the 1.1 that's ever, whichever left? Well, the, so the 1.1 is is a budgeted number. If it, like I say, if it turns out um, during the, the course <coughs> of the next few weeks between the information that we get back from Doran Whittier in terms of the revised scope of work, uh, it's not necessary to, uh, w when we go to town meeting, uh, to, to, to use that 1.1, then it can be adjusted down. But at this point in time, I, I wanted to err on the side of being too high as opposed to being too low. So we'd go to free cash? Well, no. I mean, it's, it's a, it, it only, well, if, 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 the, if the town were to appropriate the f full 1.1 and only spent uh, 1 million, then yes, it would go to the, okay. the, um, the general fund and then free cash. But my sense is that between now and then, that number may be able to be adjusted. Okay. All right. and, and I know $100,000 doesn't seem like a lot, but it's coming from a different source, the ARPA funds, and I don't want to hurt one and if we have it in the other. So that's where I'm coming from. Uh, regarding the um, unfunded liability that we have with uh, retirement, so we're, we're out, and I don't know if Brian can maybe respond to it, uh, Mr. Manager. Uh, we're, we're going out to 2037 to be fully funded with our retirement liability. So we've been tucking money away, just like you would as you've described in the past when you have a house and you pay off to the principal a little bit more to bring that, that down a bit. So we've been tucking quite a bit away uh, towards that principal. So is that unfunded liability going to come down? Are we, are we still... Why are we projecting out to 2037? Uh, should we be, pre should we have an idea that we're going to be funded by 2035, maybe? Uh, there's a lot of moving pieces, I think, within the Middlesex valuation for the town of Wilmington. We're working on getting an updated report from the actuaries that do the work for Middlesex to kind of be able to provide the board, um, in essence, what the bang for the buck is for the prepayment of the retirement that we've been making the last, I don't know, seven or eight years now. Um, to be honest, there's a lot, of, as I said, there's a lot of moving pieces. One of them is just the estimated rate of return of today's money in future markets, which uh, Middlesex continues to reduce the estimated rate of return, and that, in theory, basically tips the scale to have the money, uh, today's dollar, worth less in the future, which basically increases the obligation. So, um, and I believe as a whole, Middlesex is still working in a uniform manner. They wouldn't have one community in theory, paid off in 2035, while the rest of the communities in there would be at 2037 or 2038. Right, so, and, yeah. and, that, and that's what I thought, because I know Middlesex County encompasses about 20 or so communities. Yeah, I think it's a little bit and more than that. I don't know that. how, you, you know, I, I work in retirement. Yeah, no, you know, I know, and the major. goal is to so have I, our... I, it's been kind of difficult for me to understand how we're tucking away all this money 
to the, not the, meet our unfunded liability no, sooner. The, the goal is to essentially minimize or reduce the future payments that we have. Um, historically, you've seen it continues to climb upward. Mm -hmm. um, the next two years of figures we have are still, a, you know, 6.5 to 7 or percent or so increases. And the further you go on, the more money that is. It adds up very quickly. And our hope is to essentially blunt the impact in the future for the retirement obligations for the town. Okay. And, and then you get the OPEB, uh, which you're putting in, again, a million dollars to OPEB. Correct. Just for the sake of the S and P, which hasn't cooperated with us, um, is is it worth putting in that much? Or y y you're going to say yes because it's going to help I, with the unfunded liability. No, but I, I don't know. I, I many know. communities aren't doing anything. The, with the OPEB. OPEB's a tough one. Also, yeah. is that's a, a nebulous calculation to try and figure out essentially future health costs that it's very hard to put a put your thumb under. Uh, the challenge that we have is we know the basement of it is we want to pay it to the minimum of what we have the meals tax contribution to. The maximum we'll do is a million dollars the last, I don't know, probably five or six years since before I've been here. And the challenge that Jess mentioned every time is we don't want to show S&P that at this point we're unable to fulfill the trend that we look at. Every time that we go for a rating, age, rating review, they want to see that. It does, it does help to have the money essentially sitting in there to, to grow, but it's, it's a, that's a long one away from being able to resolve the OPEB. Yeah, I, and I get it. I just see 1.5 million go into the reserve of the pension fund and a million go into OPEB when if we could probably reduce that since we're not, I mean, we have an appropriation. We have the evaluation that's done every two years, right? That tells us how much yep. we're paying in the unfunded liability. Correct. So, uh, if we're not bringing down the 2037 to 2035 or 34, then really, what's the? Well, I, the, the I understand. Yeah. yeah, but but uh, I guess what I'm saying is that money could be used. We have a lot of things happening. We, we, there's, there's a, uh, it, it could be spent in other ways. That's correct. The challenge is if you don't pay for it now, is you're going to pay for it and then some in the future? And we're trying to kind of balance the scales on that. Yeah. It, it just, uh, I, I always preach on that when I get to this budget. But I know. It's just I my think own. we have it every year. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Good. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Kyra. Anything further? Okay. Uh, any <coughs> in conclusion, Jeff, I, I too look forward to uh, working through this and, and asking questions uh, throughout the process, and I would encourage everyone else to do the same. Um, this is a public meeting, so if anybody would like to make a comment or ask a question, I simply ask that you just identify yourself, and we'll do the best we can to entertain it. Anybody from the audience like to make a comment, question? Not all at once. Okay. Well, just as a friendly re reminder, our friends on the Finance Committee will begin their work tomorrow night in this room at 7 o'clock. And thanks to our friends at WCTV, all those meetings will be covered and broadcast live and be able to be available on the web uh, if you need to watch them afterwards. And I, too, uh, will be taking advantage of that. And uh, once again, we thank you for the work that they'll do in the coming weeks. Okay. Uh, if there isn't anything else, we do have quite a bit of agenda left. At this time, I'd just like to entertain a motion to uh, briefly recess. Is there a motion? So move. Is there a second? All those in favor? Take a brief recess, and we'll be right back. Thank you.
Okay, at this time I'll call the meeting back to order. Thank you. Uh, we're just returning from a brief recess if you're just joining us on WCTV. And we are about to begin our second appointment and final appointment of the night, which is with our planning and conservation director, Ms. Valerie Gingrich, regarding an action plan for multi-family zoning for the MBTA communities. Good evening, Valerie. Good evening. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So when you're ready, I'll, the floor is yours. We appreciate you uh, keeping us up to date. I know you have a presentation to share. And I do have a brief, brief presentation, um, very brief. Um, this uh, action plan that you're going to see tonight, I prepared um, on behalf of the town after our previous conversation in October, uh, where we talked about this step in the, the process. This action plan keeps the town in interim compliance with the requirement for the town to have a as of right multifamily housing district. Um, it's very general in nature. It does not bind the town to anything. We don't, um, this is our sort of best guess of how this might go. Um, and it does not require a vote from the board. I'm able to submit it on behalf of the town as a planning director to the state to keep us in interim compliance. So I wanted to run through it quickly, just so you know what's in the plan. So here we are, Wilmington, we're a commuter rail community. We have an obligation, according to DHCD, to create a zoning district that allows for 1,248 units. Um, do we have a rapid transit station? No, we do not. Do we have an MBTA commuter rail station? Yes, we do. See, we're flying through. Um, does, do we have an MBTA, sh MBTA station that might um, have located outside of Wilmington, but might have developable station area in our town? And I think we, um, we do. Anderson Woburn is less than, depending on where you're, you're measuring from, it's less than a half mile from our town border. So it might cast its half mile circle into town a little bit into the uh, industrial areas along Woburn and, and Industrial Way. So I, I, I checked yes for that with Anderson Woburn. This is me filling out the form, my information. I included Jane from my office, Tony from engineering who have been helping me kind of go through the, the compliance model spreadsheet and maps, um, which has, has been very interesting uh, so far. Um, do we have established housing related goals, strategies, plans? Yes, we do. And I had a, an attached kind of blurb on what we would say to that, um, including that we established the neighborhood mixed use district in 2016. We've been really trying to create affordable units, um, the inclusionary bylaw in 2019. Um, and then the Princeton <coughs> development, um, Friendly 40B that we uh, went through that process in 2020 and now um, wrapping up the, the 40B process with 100 West Street. So those are sort of the, some of the efforts that we've been going through to create housing and, and affordable housing. Are we currently working on any other plans for planning for housing? This was kind of a strange question because we don't have a planning process right now that's going on, but we're always planning for housing. So I just took an easy no, I don't know. Um, it's a, a strange question. So they want to know a little bit about what we're thinking. Uh, we don't have any existing districts that would meet these requirements. So I checked off that it would have to be either a new overlay district or just a new um, base zoning district. And they want you to describe sort of the potential district and location. I had a small blurb that was attached that it would be primarily focused on the half mile um, distance from the main train station and the North Wilmington train station. Um, and that we would be sort of looking at things like the groundwater protection district and um, some of the constraints with sewer and transportation to sort of figure out where this might be most appropriate, but it primarily has to be centered around a train station. So that's that's the area that we're, we're looking at. 
what non-housing characteristics are important for us to consider when we're thinking about this? Um, maybe incentives for ground floor retail use since we can't require that the ground floor be retail, the availability of sewer, the capacity of existing transportation infrastructure, avoiding groundwater protection districts that limit impervious coverage. Um, all of those things are going to be challenges for any sort of district that has um, any potential for this. So putting together a timeline as a best guess, um, continuing to review the, the, um, the spreadsheet that we were provided and the maps, um, I, I guess that we were, we're doing that currently. We're gonna continue to do that for the next few months. Um, planning board meeting and or a meeting at, at this board to discuss kind of what we found and um, what our future might be with um, exploring a district. That could happen this spring um, to give some um, kind of guidance on, on how to proceed. And then should we proceed, we would be developing a zoning district over the spring, summer, and into the fall. We would test it with their compliance model in the fall. We would do a, a few months of public outreach gearing up to the 2024 town meeting where we would have to vote on this district and then submit that district um, after it's approved um, by the state um, to DHCD by, by August or so. Um, I think we get articles back from the attorney general. So. Um, submitting that to the state before the end of the year, which is the deadline. So that's sort of how it would um, unfold should we pursue this road. And that's, that's really the form. As you can see, it's not much. It doesn't ask for a lot of details. Um, this is what we would um, aim to consider. I'm happy to take any questions or direction. Thank you very much, Valerie, and I appreciate mm -hmm. you being here, and I appreciate the visual walking us through that. that uh, certainly very helpful. I'll open it up if any of my colleagues have questions or comments. Mrs. Maselli. Thanks, Valerie. Um, let's say we move forward with it just on that scenario, and it goes to town meeting, and it gets voted down for the rezoning. What happens then? Then we would not be in compliance. Okay, so that would just knock us out, and even though we said, yep, we're in, it gets knocked down, we're out. And yeah, I think we, I think we, they have, DHCD has, has said in um, webinar meetings that, you know, you might want to give time for multiple town meetings because it might not pass right away. Mm -hmm. You might need kind of several goes at it to get it right. Um, so we could keep trying if we wanted to keep trying. Okay, so there's that option if, if we go that route, yeah. I believe so. I think that deadline is really, um, I believe you can come back into compliance after the deadline, but um, we haven't, I don't think we've gotten that far to know exactly how that works. Okay. Nope. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. De Palma? Just a couple of questions. Uh, one, if we do agree to this with the state, can we designate an area or is this sort of open warfare? Like, for instance, if we said, okay, you know, we'd like to get involved with it, but we want to designate from, I'm just using streets right now, just uh, Clark Street to uh, Church Street uh, along 38 mm -hmm. as the area that we, we would want to see developed. Uh, that's number one. And number two, do you have to have the property available to develop at that time? I'll start with number two. You don't have to, so... You don't have to have the property available. There can be other things on it. It could never be developed um, per this district. It just has to have the potential of that being developed. So let's say if Metro was included in the district, right? Um, doesn't mean you have to knock down Metro and build something else. It's just that someday if someone wanted to knock down Metro, they could build something else that would meet this. Um, and yes, they do want you to have a specific area that's you know 50 at least 50 acres and meets all sorts of um, density requirements and specifics um, so they would want us to designate an area thank you mm -hmm. thank you mr de palma and mr. Yeah, thank you, mr. Bendel. and just to follow up on mr palma that designated area is that supposed to and i i say this because i 
Is that supposed to um, allow for 1,258 <laughs> units that we can't <laughs> really put anywhere in Wellington? <laughs> so that 50-acre district would have to allow for that 1248, yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. I, I can't, I'm just, uh, you know, picturing the town of Wellington around those two areas, and I don't know where uh, this community is going to put uh, 1,248 units. Um, okay. Um, any, any news on, on um, since you have it in your report, uh, on Princeton? Is that moving forward? Or what's happening there? We haven't heard anything. Um, we, we keep hearing from different places any day now, but um, we've been hearing that for a while, so nothing, nothing new yet. Yeah. And, if, and, and I see that it says here that West Street passed a ZBR approval or? ZBA yeah. closed the public hearing um, last week, and they'll be voting on that development uh, at their March 8th meeting. So we're, it's, it's basically wrapping up that process within a uh, they have a draft approval that's been circulating for that. And how is that working with the sewer and all of that stuff, or is that something the planning board takes care of? Uh, uh planning board, no. Um, the sewer, uh, we're waiting for our kind of final report from our sewer consultant to kind of tell us whether the sewer has the capacity um, to pump off peak. Um, it looks like it may. Um, so those issues are being kind of ironed out with the ZBA. And then what happens if that goes through? Princeton still moves forward, right? I mean, Princeton. I know it's a, you say either one of them meets the threshold of 10%, mm -hmm. but. So Princeton has their comprehensive permit. Um, that's good for a number of years, and it would still be good, you know, for those number of years even if 100 West Street is approved as well. So they, we would have two projects that are approved. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kyra. Uh, Valerie, I just have one question. Uh, so if you're watching this meeting tonight and you're watching this for the first time, you're hearing about this for the first time, and, and perhaps you're concerned about the possibility of having 1,200 plus new neighbors in your neighborhood, um, a concern that I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's a concern that all, all of us up here are sharing. Uh, who should they voice that concern to? Where should they, where can we direct them? I could imagine that some of us may get questions even as early as tomorrow, if not tonight, uh, if you're watching about the possibility of, you know, upwards of 1,200 new units in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Where should we direct these folks to voice those concerns? Well, I would love to talk to them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I, any feedback is helpful because, um, it's really something that the, you know, it's something that we'll have to go to town meeting, right? So if, um, you know, depending on how folks feel about it, we should either kind of see if we can make it work. Um, and we'll be doing, so I guess we'll be doing a lot more um, exploration of the issue in the model itself. I just, I'm just getting into it. Um, to see, you know, if this parcel's in the district with this mix of parameters, how many units do we get there? So I've been kind of looking at it that way. I'll, we'll continue to do that so that we can have some sort of idea of, of here's what we think might be a best case scenario. And we would look for feedback definitely then when we have a planning board meeting or coming back to, to you all to, to talk about it in more detail to know that, you know, what that feedback, um, how that guides us. So. Um, okay. Thank you. I could imagine that uh, you've got about 23,000 emails uh, headed towards yeah. your <laughs> inbox at this moment. Do you want, Mr. Yeah, just a, a quick follow up. Yeah, I'll call you tomorrow on this. <laughs> 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 the housing choice zoning, uh, it's, I would assume that it goes into a, a, an article uh, to the town meeting for it to be approved. Is it your understanding that when it goes to town meeting, is it done by a majority vote or a two-thirds vote? And if you don't, I mean, just, I, th I just. I think it would be majority because it would be an as-of-right multifamily district. Um, but we would, the planning board would need to make a, a judgment on that. Um, we would probably involve council just to make sure that we have it right. But 
typically, uh, not as of right, multifamily would be a majority vote. Okay. And, and maybe for the folks who weren't here for previous conversations, we've talked about a lot of concerns about this and that it might not be the right thing um, to proceed with. Um, so we're all very well aware of that, um, including myself. <laughs> and, um, but you know what I've advocated to this board is that if we can just do a little bit of exploration with it just to make sure that we don't find some, you know, oh, hey, this might not be so bad or um, find some, some more information that um, just to keep us in the game with this plan mm -hmm. and keep us, you know, in interim compliance um, while we kind of explore the topic. Um, but fully knowing that it, it, might, it might not go forward. Yes, and, and just for viewers at home, maybe tuning in again for the first time, we did have you in a couple weeks back, maybe a few months back now, and I think if I recall correctly, each member of the board had uh, some serious concerns about this possibility, and uh, we voiced those, and I think we continue to have those concerns, and as you mentioned, we're proceeding with extreme caution here, uh, recognizing that uh, this could be a, a reality whether we like it or not. Uh, Mr. Hall. Uh, I guess just a, a couple of points. The first one being, again, just to um, uh, clarify, and I believe I have this uh, correct, that if a uh, this district were to be established <coughs> and superimposed, if you will, over a particular uh, area of town, uh, it, it doesn't mean that the existing uses automatically go away uh, so to the extent that there is housing within this area or businesses, uh, w what it does is creates the opportunity for a future property owner to say, I no longer want to uh, have this single family housing in this area or I want to do um, this kind of development and it's a by right ability, correct? Right, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't kind of wipe everything away that's there. It just provides a, an opportunity for the future for them to do something different, um, something in accordance with this type of zoning. And if we did an overlay district, we could even have it that what's there now, what's allowed there now is allowed, and then this would be something on top of that that would be also allowed. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes that's done as an overlay. Um, that gets a little bit more complicated when you have things that don't um, don't always mesh together very well but it's an option to look at and the other um, I guess point or question I would just raise and, and we've <coughs> talked about this a little bit in the past but I know you've expressed some concern about um, the um, groundwater protection uh, district and certainly Wilmington as many of us know has a lot of uh, areas of wetland and, and so on, and, and the groundwater protection areas are pretty pervasive throughout town. So what, it, what kind of limitations does that put on this kind of zoning? Sure, so our groundwater protection district, uh, which actually most of the commuter rail station area is in the ground, right around it, is in the groundwater protection district, that district only allows 15% of the lot to be impervious. So buildings and pavement can only cover 15% of the lot. So that's a very small number. So if you want to go above that number, you have to get a special permit from the planning board if it's a commercial use. <coughs> and this, the way this is written, um, it has to be multifamily as of right with no special permits. So if the groundwater protection district requires a special permit, um, it's my understanding that it would very much complicate um, that part of the district wouldn't be meeting the, the requirements. So we have to avoid the groundwater protection district um, with the district, but we have to stay within a half mile of the train station. So it's, it's actually gonna be pretty difficult to, to figure it out. So um, we'll see. Because I don't know that anyone wants to change the groundwater protection district. That's pretty important to um, to what we're doing. So yeah. maybe we can put it in Silver Lake. So go right away to Silver Lake. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, questions, comments, or suggestions for Valerie? Thanks, Val. 
Just thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, I guess just to be clear, um, the, the plan would be uh, that this would be submitted tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, to uh, DHCD and keep us in interim compliance. Is there any objection? Hearing none. Okay, Valerie, thank you so much for your presentation and for your work on this, and we look forward to hearing from you again. Thank you. Thank Have a great you. night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we'll be moving on. I do want to point out that at the conclusion of tonight's meeting, we'll be going to our second executive session of the evening for the purpose of discussing strategies with respect to collective bargaining as it relates to the International Association of Firefighters, Local 1370, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Subsection 3. Uh, but before that, we'll move on to communications. I'll turn to Mr. Hull, and if anybody has a question or a comment, please feel free to interrupt us. Mr. Hall? Yes. Uh, so first is a, a memo uh, from me to the board uh, with regard to uh, the EPA Community Involvement Plan. This document has been uh, out there for a period of time now. Uh, the town uh, and other parties had through G uh, January 16th uh, to provide feedback and comments on the plan. It's basically uh, a plan to try to engage uh, the Wilmington public uh, to provide information about uh, the Olin site and uh, try to be as user-friendly, if you will, or transparent as possible. Uh, we had our environmental consultant, uh, Verdantis, uh, prepare some comments. Uh, staff critiqued it, uh, and that uh, comment uh, document was submitted. Uh, the board has a copy of it. Essentially, uh, in, in part, there were suggestions made about uh, that this uh, plan should note the uniqueness of the site and also provide information about the proposed redevelopment so that folks are aware of that. Uh, next is a memo uh, from me to the board with regard to a status on the Senior Center uh, com a Building Committee uh, project they met back on January 11th uh, with our architect Dietz and Company and our OPM P3. Uh, it was noted that the project is shifting from schematic to final design, uh, which would require a greater level of detail. There will be some data sheets uh, prepared for each room within the building, uh, and the uh, representative from uh, Dietz and Company would be meeting with the director to go through that uh, and just noting that the committee will be meeting every other week. Uh, next is a uh, memo uh, from me to the board with regard to the uh, school, uh, town school uh, building uh, committee, uh, essentially uh, going through a similar process. Uh, there uh, we met with Johnson Roberts, uh, the architect, uh, and also our OPMP3 on 117. Uh, and one of the things that was discussed at that meeting is uh, the procurement process to use. Uh, there's really two options, uh, one being uh, design, bid, build. The other is um, the um, uh, CM at risk, approach construction manager at risk. Uh, both have certain advantages and disadvantages. Certainly one of the advantages of a CM at risk uh, is it brings the contractor into the process earlier. Uh, and as a, as a result of that, they're able to work with the architect and work out some of the potential design issues sooner. And there's also certain uh, materials that can be ordered uh, earlier, which given the supply chain issues that still seem to be uh, uh, subject to discussion, that may have some advantage. Ultimately, the uh, committee uh, decided to recommend the CM at risk approach. Uh, next is a, uh, a memo from me with regard to a uh, request to reallocate uh, the $100,000 uh, from the uh, ARPA fund uh, to utilize for uh, this uh, play structure that I talked about in my budget presentation. Uh, in consultation with Shelley Newhouse, the health director, uh, she indicated that the $50,000 that was originally earmarked to address COVID-related uh, support efforts is no longer necessary. Uh, also, in talking with Brian Perry, our finance director, uh, you'll recall that $100,000 was set aside for 
uh, for uh, ad grant administration. Uh, we do have a, uh, a firm that is assisting us with grant administration. I think to this point uh, we've spent uh, about $2,000. Uh, he believes that it's uh, reasonable uh, to reallocate $50,000 and re retain 50 for further grant administration. So this um, uh, memo is recommending that the board consider that uh, reallocation. Uh, next is the uh, memo uh, again to the board uh, laying out the schedule with the Finance Committee. Uh, we start our meetings uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll go through a general overview of the budget, talk about revenues and some of the general government uh, departments, insurance and miscellaneous accounts, statutory charges. Uh, meet again on February 2nd. Uh, recreation, veterans services, elderly services and historical are on, on deck. Then again on February 7th, which is a Tuesday for Department of Public Works and uh, building, uh, Public Buildings Department. Uh, Thursday, February 9th is the uh, Information Technology Public Library and Town Clerk's Office. Uh, Tuesday, February 14th would be Planning and Conservation, uh, Building Inspection and Board of Appeals and the Board of Health. Uh, Thursday, uh, February 16th, the Police Department, Public Safety, Central Dispatch, and Fire Department. And then Tuesday, February 28th, would be the Wilmington Public Schools. Uh, and Thursday, March 2nd, the Shawshin Tech. All these meetings uh, start at 7. Uh, the next uh, piece of correspondence is uh, informing the board uh, about uh, information that um, uh, EPA has uh, passed on uh, to the town. It was a letter uh, received from uh, Wilmington Woburn uh, Industrial asking that EPA entertain a prospective purchase agreement with them. This is part of an effort on their part to ultimately acquire the property. Uh, and uh, as far as I know, at this point, no further action has been taken uh, by EPA. Uh, we have um, a memo again from me to the board just providing an update on uh, a recent um, a Zoom session with uh, representatives from the M MBTA uh, providing a status on the rail crossing and rail crossing update. Uh, they provided some data on crossing incidents between October and December of uh, 2022, the number of incidents of crossing arm uh, issues has declined over the prior year, but they still are having instances in which the arms are being struck by vehicles, uh, and these seem to be primarily on egress points going into the former Sweetheart property. Uh, also, there was some discussion about the uh, platform that is uh, in the works for North Wilmington. Uh, we had uh, contacted them about um, both the design and the type of uh, fencing. Uh, they note that they are um, going to be putting up a black vinyl coated fencing as opposed to your conventional chain link fence, so it should have a better, a little bit more of an appeal. Uh, they also indicated that they are, uh, would be willing to work with Princeton Properties in terms of providing an egress uh, to that platform further up uh, near where the platform uh, will be located. Uh, we have um, uh, correspondence uh, regarding the uh, Wildwood School interim plan. This was just a, an update of a meeting uh, that took place on January 25th between uh, Chair O'Connell, uh, Dr. Glenn Brand, uh, Jennifer uh, Bryson, the chair of the school committee, and myself uh, to try to uh, address uh, issues associated with the interim plan at the middle school. Uh, ultimately, uh, the plan coming away from that meeting was that uh, there's, there was one particular room that was slated to be, or uh, one particular space slated to be um, uh, created into a conference room, which uh, the uh, school department indicated they uh, could, um, uh, could pass on, so to speak and then another set of uh, bathrooms uh, that would be located in what is currently the library. 
uh, that they believe uh, they could forego. Uh, and so it, following that, just as a, an aside, we did have a, a Zoom session with uh, Doran Whittier uh, and instruct them of, of our plans, and they are providing uh, some re revised cost estimates. <clears throat> we have uh, a memo from Jamie Magaldi, the Public Works Director, uh, with regard to uh, work going on um, uh, at the cemetery. Uh, work is beginning to develop the, the property that the town acquired uh, on uh, a Wildwood Street. It'll be known as Section Q, um, a, an extension of the existing cemetery. Uh, a notice of, of intent will be filed with the Conservation Commission due to its proximity to wetlands. Uh, and the concept is to have two gravel lots with upright monuments uh, running parallel with Wildwood Street. Uh, we have a, a memo from Valerie Gingrich uh, with regard to 6K uh, Inc. It's a company that's based in uh, North uh, Andover, and they've approached us about uh, pursuing a, a TIF. Uh, you'll recall this was the last time or the only time we've granted a TIF was with analog. Um, there is a desire to have a, a, a meeting. Um, uh, they're looking to um, discuss this and what I would propose is that we take a, an approach similar to the one uh, previously taken. Uh, we would have a, a committee um, to discuss the merits uh, and also uh, meet with them as needed. And I would uh, ask, and this will be coming up on the board to consider, uh, that a representative from the board of selectmen or select board uh, serve on that uh, committee as well as a member of the finance committee. Uh, also, we have an email from uh, Dan Deutsch, special counsel with regard to Olin and the uh, NET proposal. Uh, he's just noting that uh, the Surface Transportation Board, which as you recall for m many years now has been requiring uh, update reports every three months, uh, is suspending that reporting requirement uh, for now uh, until uh, either 60 days after Olin and EPA uh, enter a consent agreement or 60 days after the town and NET and Wilmington Woburn Industrial become aware of a consent agreement. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have um, communication from Verizon Cable, uh, which is uh, a requirement by the Department of Telecommunications and Cable. Um, oh, sorry, did I skip Brand. one? Yeah, Dr. Brand. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. Uh, so Dr. Brand uh, is looking for a representative <coughs> uh, from the board to serve on a strategic planning uh, committee. Uh, this process takes place every three years, uh, and so they're looking to update their plan. Uh, they will be uh, meeting, I think their first meeting is actually scheduled for uh, March, uh, February 2nd, February 7th, I'm sorry, February 7th, uh, from 2 to 5 in the afternoon. And then they also have uh, additional <coughs> meetings beyond that, but looking to see if a member of the board of uh, the select board would be interested in serving. Uh, and then finally, uh, as uh, previously noted, communication from uh, Verizon, uh, their annual complaint filing report, which is, is required by uh, state regulation. The only note there is that um, with regard to service interruptions, um, they ranged from uh, impacting 10, uh, which was the lowest number, to uh, a high of 2,703. Uh, individuals on at certain dates during calendar 2022. Okay, thank you very much. We're moving into board to consider, please. Mr. Hull. Yes, uh, so under board to consider, um, there is a uh, request uh, from Valerie Gingrich uh, that the board uh, sign off on the local initiative program compliance certificate. Uh, this happens each time there's a sale of property uh, in a, an area that uh, has affordable units, uh, in this case Whispering Pines Condominium um, Unit 2305. Uh, there's a sale there and the requirement is um, to make sure that uh, the unit is going to remain uh, 
as an affordable unit. Uh, so the checks have taken place and that uh, will be the case. Uh, so it's the recommendation that the board um, authorize uh, that action. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. Okay, the motion's by Mr. De Palmer. Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and second. Any discussion? Yeah, is Mr. The, Cara? Is it, um, Mr. Meadow, is it to be signed off by, the, by you, uh, Jeff, the, the, the town manager, or by Judy uh, as the chairman of the board? Do you know? Uh, let's see, I'm just looking at that now. Because. Um, uh, well, it uh, looks like it uh, just is uh, one signature, so I guess it would be the. Um, it says C CEO. Yeah. So well, yeah. It's CEO being the select board. So, in this case, uh, it would appear that it would be the chair. Right. Um, so is it okay to? You, I mean, do you feel comfortable voting without the chair here? Uh, I I think there's no question that. Um, that it merits approval. This is um, the process has been done to uh, check the um, particulars on the transaction to confirm that it will remain an affordable unit. Um, so I, I see no problem in the board uh, taking a vote to authorize uh, authorize this. And then, if she did object in the near future, then you would let us know and. We can, uh, we can vote for our opinion of it tonight, and, and if the chair has objection, then we can revisit it, I guess. Yeah, I, I would want to check with Valerie on this only because I, I just want to confirm and that I don't there isn't a time will. sensitivity to this. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, even if we voted right, it's going to be whatever, it's, if it's to the majority. I just wanted yeah. to make sure yeah. that, right. you know, mm. that, that Judy is. No, I, can, I appreciate yeah. that, Mr. Carr. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so there is a, a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next under board to consider is a request from Christopher Neville uh, on behalf of the uh, Rotary uh, looking to have an event at Silver Lake. Uh, this is um, part of the Rotary's, um, uh, part of their pro regular program. Uh, where they have this uh, polar plunge, so to speak, uh, and they're proposing uh, to do this on March 18th at Silver Lake at 11. Uh, it's really a fundraiser uh, for uh, ALS. Uh, I've talked to um, uh, Brett Sowen, the rec director, um, and also police and fire are aware of it. We don't have any concerns. Um, I think the plan will be we'll have <clears throat> just have um, a representative there to um, open the bathhouse so that they can uh, get out of their wet clothes after they've made the plunge and and um, get into some dry clothes. But other than that, it's pretty. Um, it, it should take about 40, 40 minutes or so, I guess. Make a motion to approve the request. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank <coughs> you. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, the next request is uh, Deanna De Gregorio, president of the Wilmington Community Fund to use the municipal parking lot <clears throat> on Saturday, September 16th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. for the purpose of a community shredding event. You'll recall that this has become an annual event at this point, and I think it's been valued by folks in town who are looking to get rid of uh, documents. Make a motion to approve the uh, request. Motion's been made by Mr. Kyra. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Maselli. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next is a request of John Romano, uh, past president, uh, Wilmington Sons of Italy, to use the municipal parking lot and 4th of July building uh, for their annual antique and collector's car show on Sunday, <coughs> October 17, 2023, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. over the rain date of Sunday, October 23rd, uh, 22nd, rather. Uh, there are no conflicts. Motion to approve the request by, I think you said October 17th. I have 15th down here. Oh, is it 15th? I don't know. I Let me just uh, check the calendar uh, just to make sure. It's, uh, October. Uh, it is uh, 15th. I'm sorry. You're right. The Sunday. Okay. Yeah, October 15th. 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Yep. Main date, Sunday the 22nd. So a motion's been made with the corrected date. Is there a second? I'll second it. 
Second, thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next is a request uh, to reallocate the ARPA funds from the, for the installation of a play structure next to the middle school. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion has been made by Mrs. Maselli. Is there a second? Oh, second. Seconded by Mr. De Palma. Discussion? Hearing none, call for the vote. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, board to consider the request of Daniel Hall, uh, Chairman, uh, Board of Library Trustees, to sponsor a town meeting article naming the conference room at the Wilmington Memorial Library the Christina Stewart Room. As you know, she'll be retiring in September. So moved. I'll make a motion to accept that. The motion's been made by Mr. De Palmer. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Maselli. Any discussion? This is a, a fitting tribute uh, to Tina Stewart for sure. But uh, what conference room are they talking about? Because isn't there's the conference room is upstairs that's already named after. Uh, there's the Vanda room, Vanda but then room, this is right? the larger room. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I just want to make sure that they. Uh, right. All right. That's good. Fitting is correct, absolutely. Any mm -hmm. further discussion? No. Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. It is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next is a board to consider appointing a member of the board to serve on the Wilmington uh, Public Schools Strategic Plan Development Committee. Is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion to table this until um, the chair is here f to giving her an opportunity if she so, you know, feels that she wants to serve on this committee as well. I mean. Okay, the motion's been made by Mr. Kyra. Is there a second? Second that. There is no discussion under a motion to yeah, table. To postpone it until next meeting. Or next meeting. Table next to next meeting. Just table to clarify. Next, meeting, sure. next yeah. meeting she's here. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? It's unanimous. That'll be tabled. Thank you. And then the final board to consider is a request of Linda Caruso um, for a blood drive. Uh, she's actually the blood drive chairman for the Wilmington Sons of Italy uh, to use the municipal parking lot on and the July 4th building for a blood drive on Saturday, February 25th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion has been made by Mrs. Maselli. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by Mr. De Palma. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you. Okay, and I guess we did have one final other uh, board final. to consider the um, uh, request to have a representative uh, serve on the uh, tax incentive uh, financing committee. This again, I would, yeah. Yeah, again, I'd like to table to the next meeting that, that uh, Chairman O'Connell was uh, here for this as well. Motion's been made by Mr. Carr. Is there a second? Second. Second. There's no discussion under a motion to table. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Public comment. Would anyone like to make a public comment? <coughs> <laughs> Hearing none, we'll move on to announcements. Does any members have any announcements? Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. Any member have any new business? I can take a hint. All right, we're moving on to important dates. Mr. Hull. Uh, important dates, uh, January 31st. Uh, certainly uh, one important date is uh, the fact that it's um, Beverly Dalton's birthday. Aww. All right. uh, but beyond that, uh, we also have the Finance Committee, uh, first of several meetings, Town Hall, Room 9, 7 p.m., uh, the uh, FY24 Budget Overview, Revenues and General Government. Uh, then February uh, 1st, Town Hall, School Administration Building Committee, uh, here in Room 9, 6 p.m. February 2nd, again, Finance Committee, uh, 7 p.m., uh, recreation, veterans, elderly services, historical. February 3rd uh, is the last day to submit petition warrant articles for inclusion on the warrant to the annual town meeting on April 29. Uh, February 7th, the Finance Committee meeting here at Room 9, 7 p.m., Public Works, Public Buildings. Uh, February 9th, Finance Committee uh, here in Room 9, IT, Public Library, and Town Clerk. 
February 13th is the next select board meeting here at 7 p.m. February 14th, Finance Committee, Room 9, 7 p.m., Planning and Conservation, Building Inspector, and Board of Health. February 16th, Finance Committee, Room 9, 7 p.m., Police, Public, uh, Public Safety Dispatch, and Fire. Uh, February 20th is President's Day, Town Offices Closed. Uh, February 27th is another Select Board meeting here at 7 p.m. Uh, the 28th is a Finance Committee meeting at 7 p.m., Wilmington Public Schools. March 2nd, Finance Committee uh, here at Room 9, 7 p.m., uh, Shawshin Technical School District. February 13th is a Select Board uh, meeting at 7 p.m. Uh, March 21st is a Finance Committee Planning Board uh, public hearing uh, in the auditorium at 7. Uh, March 27th is a Select Board meeting uh, here in Room 9, 7 p.m. And then April 12th, the last day to register to vote uh, in the annual town elections and annual town meeting. Town Clerk's office will be open until 5 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Hall. And lastly, we oh, have. Just wanted to mention, Sorry. you missed the senior center meetings on there. Oh, did I? Thank yeah. you. Yeah, they go every other week. The next one will be on February 8th, and then. Yes, we'll that's right. Okay, so February 8th. February 8th, the 15th, it's going to be March 1st, 8th, like that. Well, we'll have all that information clearly posted. Yep, no problem. Yes, thank you for that. Any other important dates we may have missed? Okay, happy birthday in advance to Beverly as well. Uh, lastly, our salute to service tonight. It's my, uh, my privilege on behalf of the Board of Selectmen to present to um, uh, Wilmington Police Officer Nicholas Knopfler, who joined the Army Reserve National Guard in 2002, was activated in 2003 in support of Operation Enduring Freedom and served in Cuba. He was activated in 2005 in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom and served in Iraq where he was awarded the Bronze Star. Activated again in 2011, he served in Afghanistan, then reactivated in 2012 for another tour in Afghanistan. Among Nick's many awards are the Armed Forces Reserve Medal with M device and 10-year bronze hourglass, excellence in competition rifleman badge, excellence in competition pistol badge, non-commissioned officer professional development medal, NATO medal, two Army accommodation medals, a joint uh, unit medal, a combat action medal, and the German Army uh, marksmanship badge, uh, bronze medal, and I'm sure I may have even missed a few or mispronounced it. Um, nonetheless, he has earned every one of those, and as you all know, he is a member of the Wilmington Police Department. Tonight is bittersweet. He will be uh, relocating with his family uh, and will be leaving us, uh, in, although he's a valued member of our Wilmington Police Department, we wanted to honor him uh, tonight for his service to our community and obviously for his tremendous service to our country. We thank him and we wish him and his family all the best moving forward. Uh, and with that, uh, we will uh, be entertaining a motion uh, to adjourn uh, to executive session for the purpose of discussing strategies with respect to collective bargaining as it relates to International Association of Firefighters Local 1370 in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Subsection 3, and not to return. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. As stated, it's been made by Mr. De Palma, seconded by Mrs. Maselli. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Good night, everyone. Thank Good you. Good night.